What is the story of the Doomslayer? How is he connected to the Night Sentinels, Argent Denor, and the Con Maker? And who was that mysterious Seraphim character? All of these questions will be answered in this video. The history of the Sentinel people takes place in the days before man first spoke. A giant shard of metal and rock would pierce the planet. This event would release the firstborn creatures known as the elemental wraiths. As they took to the skies, their wraith call sound would spread across Argent Denur. This in turn would bring vitality to the land, and all that felt their breath were awakened from eternal slumber. Wherever they went, fierce beasts and an unforgiving biosphere would rise up. First came feral creatures that invigorated the magic from the wraiths. They grew to enormous heights and were known as the Ancestrals. These creatures tore the land apart in their war, destroying all creation. Some time later, the Argenta people emerged. At first, they were wild-blooded tribes, but would later learn how to forge a sword and build a city. This was the time of man. As the people of Argenta would form a society, other tribes would try to attack them, but they overcame the barbarian hordes, hardened their resolve, and formed the Order of the Night Sentinels. Around the time King Etrix took the throne, they were visited by white beings from the heavens above. They brought gifts to the people of Argent Donur. They were known as the Makers. Over time, they would integrate themselves into Sentinel society and alter its traditions. Tempted by the promise of the afterlife and eternal peace, the people of Argent Donur followed the Maker Law, which led them to spiritual prosperity. Over time, the Argenta people would conquer other worlds in the name of the Khan Maker. New alliances would be made, and their army would expand. As time passed by, all seemed well with the Sentinel people, but the Khan Maker would approach King Rowan on his throne about something. She had foreseen a vision, that one day a man from within the Argenta people would end her reign. So a device called the Divinity Machine was constructed. Only the strongest warriors were tested for any impurities. The people of Argenta would comply with this, as to not jeopardize their safe passage into the heavenly realm of Erdak. The person in question was labeled as the Dark One, but for many generations he did not appear within the Sentinel people. The prophecy of the Unholy One was written, but through the ages the warning signs grew faint, until the Khan Maker and the Order of the Dig would barely speak about it. As the people of Argent Anur would prosper, one king would rule over Sentinel Prime for many years. They were selected through a warrior caste, and in times of battle, the king was expected to lead his army into war. Sentinel law says that any king unfit for battle is not able to rule. The first king in Sentinel history was King Ormero, the father. What made the Sentinel army so strong was that they harnessed the power from the elemental wraiths, and only their strongest warriors were set to protect them, for only they were immune to the wraith call, which drove lesser men into madness. The Order of the Dig would pay tribute to the wraiths and appease to their tempestuous hunger. Despite the powers the wraiths had, they did not offer a life of paradise, peace, or prosperity, but the con makers offered them all of these things. During the rule of King Novik, the Argenta people secured peace and safety through dimensions across time and space. But one day, an outlander came to them. He was not from this world. How he arrived upon their land was a mystery to them. The sentinel scouts who found him said he was badly injured and near death. He would only mumble about some impending doom and demons everywhere. Before we continue about what happened after this, I have to explain the story of the Doom Guy and how he arrived on Argent Denor. So the first thing is, we have to go back in time. The Doom Guy was a normal soldier on Mars back in the first Doom game. The science facility there had opened a portal to hell and demons started coming out. The ending says you defeated the spider mastermind that led the invasion on Mars. He then goes through a hidden doorway, which could be a portal, 
and he then ends up back on Earth. There's more detail about the ending if you continue with Ultimate Doom's ending. The Spider Mastermind already sent out its legions on Earth, and this happened right before your battle with a beast. When you were on Mars fighting the demons, other demons appeared on Earth. The ending also states that your pet rabbit, Daisy, was killed by the demons. There's a picture of the Doom Guy holding the head of a rabbit, which could most likely be Daisy. Doom 2 is when you start fighting the demons again, but this time on Earth. As you progress through the levels, you would fight the Icon of Sin in the end. It appears to be the biggest demon you've ever seen, but it crumbles before your might and determination. You've stopped the demon invasion on Earth, and the story ends with humans trying to rebuild everything. This leads us to the story of Doom 64. An issue of Nintendo Power Magazine included a Doom 64 guide, but also a small bit of lore for this game. It says this, All of the demons were wiped out during my first mission. I can't explain how they have come back to life. Energy readings indicate that some force has been applied here, though something we've never encountered before. As I move through the installation, the readings grow stronger. Somewhere ahead lies a source, perhaps a vortex leading back to the homeworld of these alien invaders. The instruction manual to Doom 64 would give us more detail about this source. A long forgotten relay satellite, barely executing, decayed by years of bombarding neutrons, activates and sends its final message to Earth. The satellite message was horrific. From the planetary void, there came energy signatures unlike anything sampled before. The classified archives are opened. The military episodes codenamed Doom were not actually completed. A single entity with vast rejuvenation powers, masked by the extreme radiation levels, escaped detection. In its crippled state, it systematically altered decaying dead carnage back into corrupted living tissue. The mutations are devastating. The demons have returned even stronger and more vicious than before. As the only experienced survivor of the Doom episode, your commission is reactivated. Your assignment is clear. Merciless extermination. So, when you finish the game, it says you destroyed the mother of all demons. As the only survivor of this war, you choose to stay in hell to ensure that no demon ever rises again. This ending text was changed when Doom 64 was released in 2020 alongside Doom Eternal. There was a sister of the Mother Demon boss. Her plans were to stop you from completing your mission, but of course, she failed and you won. The ending still says you choose to remain in hell, but with different words. It says this, A grim vision takes hold of your mind, as the demon carcasses steam in your wake, stretched before you, is a path of perpetual torment, a path through doom. This still gives the message that he remained in hell to fight any demons left behind. Part of this ending is linked to Doom 2016 in the Slayer Testaments. The path of perpetual torment is the path he chose. The Doom guy remained in hell. This new Doom 64 ending does not say exactly how he got out of hell. So how does this connect to Doom 2016 and that story? Well, back in early March of this year, the developers who ported Doom 64 to next-gen consoles did say this. The mother demon you defeated in that outing had a sister, and since you've been messing up hell non-stop, she tries to get rid of you by sending you away. Perhaps she teleported you right before her body fully expired. I am also going to answer this part of the testament which says this. In his ravenous hatred, he found no peace, and with boiling blood, he scoured the umbral plains, seeking vengeance against the dark lords who had wronged him. This is referring to when the demons killed his pet rabbit, Daisy. It was the loss of Daisy that drove the doom guy into a state of pure rage and vengeance. The sight of every demon reminded him of how they took Daisy from him. And this brings us back to when the Doom Guy appeared on Argent Denor. He was brought to the Colosseum and given a second chance at freedom in some way. According to historical records, the Argenta did not jail their own kind. Instead, 
any prisoner and criminal was sent to the arena to regain their honor. If they were victorious, they would be enlisted into the front lines of the Sentinel Army. The Doom Guy would meet the priest along with the Con Maker. She became interested in the others he spoke of, another chance to spread her gift to others in need. During the eve of the Black Star, the demons came, which they called the Dark Ones. The demons came through dimensions, first one, then many, then waves of evil came across the land. The sentinels rose to meet the beasts. Casualties occurred on both sides, and thus the unholy war had just begun. Unlike enemies of the past, the demons could not be contained from the dark realm where they emerged. Their weaponry was not made of steel or stone, it was some dark magic from the essence of their very being. It was the order of the dig that unlocked the mystery to their power. They discovered some life essence that flowed through them. It originated from the dark realm. More secrets are discovered later on, and they learn the true nature of this demonic energy. This energy could be harnessed and used in various ways. It could strengthen someone, the power to heal and mend, as well as end life or enhance it, granting immortality, knowledge, and enlightened faculties beyond our understanding. The con maker saw this as a chance to extend her lifespan. And by her command, the sentinels would take the war to the demons, but amongst the sentinels, there was only one of them who knew the true nature of these demons, the outlander. The stranger who showed up on Argent de Nour had shown his passion for battle against the vile horde, and by decision of the king, he was lifted from the prisoner status and joined the sentinels in training. He became one of them, a brother in arms, an ally, a weapon, a sentinel warrior. The essence they acquired from the demon realm proved to be useful. It was a great energy source that blazed their weapons and powered their war machines. Then, on one night, the creatures caught the people of Argenta off guard. An army of demons, along with a titan creature, had come through the gate. With no warning signs present, the sentinels had pondered the idea of treason within their ranks. Despite the sentinels fighting an attack they might lose, the outlander kept fighting. He took down the demons on the ground, but the titan was invincible. The chancellor to the con maker would witness the strength and determination of the outlander, and so a decision was made by Samer Maker alone. He took the outlander away in secrecy. Without approval of the con maker, he would place the outlander through a ritual within the divinity machine. This would bless him with fierce speed and power to match his will. His eyes burning with maker magic, imbued with celestial might, and his crucible sword filled with wraith fire, he was known as the Great Slayer. With the combination of Hell's essence and maker technology, their atlans were unstoppable. Being led by the Slayer, they were ensured victory in every battle against the demons. The Sentinels vowed allegiance to the Con Maker. Their efforts were pure and their purpose was righteous. But doubt would fall upon them when they discovered Maker factories within the Demon Realm. It was gathering essence with the priests nearby. Why was this kept a secret from the Sentinels? And as for Samar Maker, who was also known as the Seraphim, he vanished after these events. His disappearance could have been voluntarily or through exile for his heresy. Shortly after, the con maker would siphon the essence from hell, process it beyond our knowledge to form the fuel we now know as Argent Energy. The Slayer would fight alongside the Sentinels for many years to come, and upon every return, they would find the city in Argent Anur to be changing. They were so focused and determined to defeat the demons on every encounter. Nobody saw the rising tide of evil their crusade had empowered. During one specific mission, the sentinels would discover the Maker's secret. The Argent energy they used to power their weapons and technology was all from the souls of their fallen brothers and sisters, and over time their bodies would transform into demons. As they explored the area, the technology used for this was not of demon origin, it was Maker technology. They stood in awe as they saw the haunted sounds of lost souls, serving an eternity of pain and suffering. 
the con maker had betrayed the people of Argentinor, she made a deal with Hell. In exchange for the worlds she controlled, Hell would consume them. The soul extractor is used to form Argent energy. This would prolong the con maker's lifespan and save her own city. Even when the Sentinels returned home, they shared their stories of slave factories that damned the souls of the innocent, but nobody believed them. They were cast down for daring to speak against the makers who had gifted them so much. The Sentinels would start to divide into two groups. There were some who sided with the con maker, which were the Marauders, and others who wanted to revolt against her. The Marauders, who stayed loyal to the con maker, were gifted with maker magic. If they fell in combat, they were denied finality in death. Instead, they were resurrected by the unholy fusion of Hellmaker technology. These fallen sentinels were returned from the dead, transformed by Hell's power, and recreated with a single purpose, to hunt the Slayer as reborn Marauder Knights in Hell's army. This would lead to a civil war that lasted many years between different factions of Sentinel tribes, one that would ultimately leave the world of Argentinur fractured and in ruin. The cities were never the same after this. The once proud and noble Sentinel army was just a memory. With only a few of them left to follow the Slayer, they sided with the priests to shut down the factories in Necroval, but their trust was misplaced yet again. The priests would also betray the remaining sentinels. Once they entered the portal on their last mission, they closed it, leaving them stranded and separated. Not only were the sentinels betrayed by the con maker and the priests, but also one of their own sentinels had betrayed them. Commander Valen was haunted by visions of his son who passed away in combat. In exchange for the location of the elemental race, they would bring his son to life. Valen agreed and struck a deal with the hell priest de Grave, but he too was betrayed. For his payment, his son was resurrected, but as the icon of sin. He would later choose exile within hell, always regretting what he did to his sentinel brothers. With the other sentinels defeated or missing, the Doomslayer continued his war against the demons in hell. He would later be lured to a temple only for the priest to bring down the temple upon him. He was then separated from his armor, entombed within a curt sarcophagus, and the mark of the Doomslayer was burned upon his crypt, a warning to all of hell that the terror within must never be freed. There he lies still, and evermore in silent suffering. But throughout his entire crusade against the demons of hell, the Doomslayer would always carry with him the left hind foot of Daisy, his pet rabbit who was taken from him by the demons when the invasion of earth began. He carries it as a reminder of innocence lost. So that's the story of the sentinel people, the doom guy, the seraphim, the con maker, and how the old doom games are connected to doom 2016 and doom eternal. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like on it. You can also subscribe to my channel to see more content like this, but tell me in the comment section, do you like the story of Doom Eternal so far? Thanks for watching and supporting my channel. I'll see you in the next video.